Florida farmers are facing a major challenge from millions of wild monkeys spread across the state, from cities to farm fields. Their invasion not only causes heavy damage to agriculture, but also threatens community safety, as they attack people on the streets and pose serious risks. So, to solve this challenge, what measures will farmers in Florida have to take? Leave number one in the comments if you are ready to join me in exploring creative and engaging solutions. Florida's agricultural industry is suffering an estimated loss of up to $75 million annually due to wild monkey attacks. This has prompted efforts to implement more effective control measures, with the shooting of wild monkeys becoming an important method. Farmers in Florida have implemented a series of measures to reduce encroachment and damage caused by wild monkeys. This solution includes the use of hunting equipment, including the cooperation of licensed hunters. Although shooting wild monkeys may be a controversial method for farmers and local communities, it is a necessary measure to maintain the balance between humans and the growing wildlife. Florida Hunter's method of wild monkey control, combined with the use of hunting equipment, is carried out in accordance with the state of Florida's strict hunting regulations. Hunters can even use fruit to attract monkeys, increasing their chances of catching them. Shooting wild monkeys is considered an effective method of controlling the monkey population. With about 10,000 wild monkeys shot each year, according to data from the Florida Department of Natural Resources and Environment. However, this method is not without mixed opinions, with many people believing that this is a cruel and unnecessary measure. This method is controversial mainly because it touches on ethical aspects. Some people believe that, considering the intelligence and emotions of wild monkeys, shooting them is not humane. However, supporters of the measure emphasize the need to minimize the damage caused by monkey populations to agriculture and local communities. Both of these views create a debate about how to approach this issue. If you agree with this method, leave comment number two. Otherwise, leave comment number zero. The most effective way to control invasive wild monkey populations is challenging, and maintaining a balance between wild monkey population control and ethics is an important issue. Although shooting wild monkeys is a commonly used method, it is ethically controversial.
Research and discussion of other control measures could help shape the future of wild monkey management in Florida. Among these measures, barrier planting can not only protect agriculture from wild monkey attacks, but also provide environmental benefits. Plants such as cacti with their thorny appearance, eucalyptus with its unpleasant fragrance, and verbena with its hard leaves are said to prevent the entry of wild monkeys. Planting this hedge not only creates a protective barrier, but can also create a suitable environment for many other plants, while also helping to maintain a balance between agricultural predictability and monkey survival. This is an example of how people and communities can seek natural solutions to complex problems in agriculture and environmental protection, while also making smart choices about their use. Use trees to achieve this goal. Not only helping to protect agriculture, but also promoting positive interactions between humans and nature. Planting barrier trees is not only a means of protection, but also a way to maintain flora and support development of wild monkeys and their natural environment. By combining agricultural wisdom and respect for the environment, we can ensure that humans and nature can exist together in balance. We can respond to challenges without destroying the natural environment and other animals. While creating a stable balance, one of the means used successfully is the use of trained dogs to deal with wild monkeys. Dogs are trained worldwide to perform a variety of tasks and their use to attack monkeys has been successful in several locations around the world. They are capable of attacking and chasing monkeys out of fields and urban areas. The presence of a few dogs may even be enough to keep the monkeys away, effectively controlling the population without causing them great harm. This exemplifies how we can innovate and integrate natural solutions to solve environmental and agricultural problems. Using dogs to attack monkeys not only helps protect agriculture and the environment, but is also an example of how humans can find creative solutions to the challenges of managing wildlife and maintain balance in nature. One of the other means used effectively is the application of cage traps, an organized method of controlling wild monkeys. Types of cage traps include woven traps, box traps, and burl traps, which help us safely capture and collect wild monkeys that need to be controlled. Most importantly, this method is painless for the monkeys, ensuring the capture process is humane and does not harm their health after capture. Once captured, the process of caring for wild monkeys becomes important. Forest monkeys need to be health-checked and vaccinated to ensure they are not carrying infectious diseases. At the same time, providing food and habitat similar to their natural environment is important to ensure they have a healthy and happy life.
when releasing wild monkeys. It is important to choose an area that suits their natural living needs. This helps preserve the monkey's natural habitat and ensures they have the opportunity to live freely and effectively reintegrate into the natural world. This is an illustrative example of how we can apply humane and effective solutions to preserve and protect wildlife. The wild monkey population is not only an issue confined to a specific area, but is also a collective responsibility of the entire community. Safeguarding our shared habitat and ensuring social well-being are crucial goals. Have you ever encountered a wild monkey before? If so, what measures have you taken to address this situation? Please share your opinions and experiences to collaboratively explore appropriate solutions. Let's create a balance between humans and wild monkeys allowing all living beings to coexist harmoniously in the same habitat. Wild boar, a species introduced by Spanish settlers in the 16th century, has become one of the most notable invasive species. Not only did they escape from their original farms, but they also naturalized, greatly affecting the local ecosystem. In the wild, feral pig populations in Florida are breeding vigorously, leading to their rapid increase. Forests are facing encroachment and destruction, especially at a rapid pace. The wetlands created during the Wilderness War contributed to serious water pollution in some areas. Currently, Florida has about 2.5 million animals, accounting for about 40% of the total wild boar population in the United States. The Florida state government has implemented a number of measures to control invasive feral hog populations by creating safe, convenient locations to observe and hunt feral hogs. Selecting such locations not only ensure efficiency in hunting, but also require quietness and avoid noise so as not to lose the opportunity to hunt wild pigs when wild boars appear. To take advantage of opportunities, the wild boar hunting process can only be carried out in a group model, in which support and interaction between group members play an important role. Teammates not only ensure safety, but also support each other in optimizing hunting strategies, ensuring every operation is efficient and safe. From approach to harvest, resulting in success and harvest more wild boar. While boar hunting is a popular recreational activity in the United States, especially in areas where the animals are considered invasive and cause significant agricultural damage, in most U.S. states licensees can hunt wild boar in unlimited numbers and at any time of the year.
According to the National Shooting Sports Foundation, the economic impact of hunting in the United States is estimated at $38.3 billion annually. The wild boar hunting industry has a $27 billion impact on the country's economy. According to a USDA report in 2019, about 29 wild boar populations were harvested through hunting and trapping. Snake is one of the popular foods in many countries around the world. However, in America, many people do not like eating snake meat, and this has many reasons. Some of the main reasons are explained in this video by Cat Farmer. If you are excited about this content, please leave number 1 in the comment section right away. Americans often have a special view of snakes, often viewing them as dangerous and scary animals, especially invasive snakes such as Florida cobras, axe-tailed snakes, and brown water snakes. The widespread distribution of snakes throughout the world, except Antarctica, makes them an ecological and economic threat in the United States. In American culture, snakes are often considered dangerous and undesirable to eat. According to a survey by the Agricultural Association, only 12% of Americans participating in the survey said they were willing to enjoy snake meat. Americans' eating habits often focus mainly on poultry and seafood, while snakes are not an important part of their daily diet. Beef, chicken and pork make up the majority of meat consumed in the U.S. Although Americans today practice diversity in meat preparation, snake meat is still not common in their daily menus. This represents another aspect of American culinary cultural diversity, in which Americans keep traditional eating habits with popular and familiar meats. The issue of safety becomes especially important when consumers do not follow safe cooking methods, increasing the risk of infection. This presents a challenge for those wanting to experiment with new diets or explore culinary diversity. Safety and health concerns are among the main reasons why some people feel nervous about consuming invasive snake meat, especially due to concerns about bacteria and related health problems strong. 
the ability of snakes to carry pathogens such as Salmonella and E. coli, as well as other bacteria and viruses, has created concern. Especially after a University of Florida study found that 30% of invasive snake meat samples from Florida contained these pathogens. Salmonella strain In addition, snakes not only carry pathogens, but there are also snakes with strong venom, which can be dangerous to human health. For example, the bites of certain types of snakes can be painful and even life-threatening, such as the chase of a man who had a terrifying experience being bitten by a snake at Midal Spro Church, along with many others. A severe handcuff and almost impossible to breathe, this is just an illustrative example of the danger that snakes can bring not only to the natural environment, but also to the social security community and the authorities, locals need to be careful. Measures to control and manage invasive snake problems in Florida and Texas are being implemented to protect both people and the environment. With a tropical climate and biodiversity, Florida is facing about 20 invasive snake species of which the Florida cobra is the most dangerous species that can be fatal to humans. Local authorities and communities are facing major challenges in managing and controlling this species. In Texas, with its diverse landscape from desert to forest, approximately 15 species of invasive snakes are confirmed to exist. The red-tailed viper EV is the most common species and can be dangerous if exposed to humans. Local communities and the Texas government face the challenge of maintaining a balance between safety and environmental protection in this context. Research and implementation of invasive snake control measures are becoming increasingly important. Public education programs play an important role in raising awareness of risks and prevention measures. Cooperation between countries and environmental organizations is key to minimizing the impact of invasive snakes and ensuring the safety and sustainability of communities and the natural environment. Green iguanas, fearsome reptiles, have a diet consisting of fruits, vegetables, small animals and insects. Their rapid reproduction, with one female able to lay 20 to 60 eggs per year, has rapidly increased the population of green iguanas in Florida causing negative impacts on the natural ecosystem of Florida State. An estimated 5 million green iguanas contribute to this ecological footprint.
In Florida, the green iguana population accounts for 90% of all iguanas in the United States. Controlling this population is challenging. However, the method of using iguanas in hunting has proven effective. They often choose to hide on high tree branches, making access difficult. However, areas near lakes or with water are often where they gather, creating favorable conditions for hunting activities. This simplifies the process of finding and capturing them with the ability to capture one animal at a time. In particular, green iguanas in Florida are often larger in size than iguanas in other areas, mainly because they often appear in coastal areas. This increases the efficiency of hunting methods, and their ability to float on water is also an advantage, making it easier to track and approach them. Reducing Florida's green iguana population has positive results in habitat control and protection. About 20% of the python population in the Florida area is an invasive problem, posing a particular challenge for farming communities and local residents. Pythons are not only predators that pose a threat to the natural environment, but are also partners that can harm farms and residential areas. They usually reside mainly in flooded forests, especially in South Florida. Their presence not only increases risks to the safety and sustainability of these forests, but also poses challenges that need to be addressed to ensure a balance between humans and pythons, thereby protecting the environment. Natural School This is an excellent example of how we can find humane and sustainable solutions to live in harmony with other species on our planet. Dealing with pythons in areas where pythons have large bodies requires professionalism and caution. Florida farmers have developed special methods to effectively catch pythons. Moving gently into areas with pythons requires sufficient force to catch them, and holding the python's head firmly is important to avoid being attacked. The risk of being bitten requires creativity as well as technical expertise. Python catchers need to be in good health to face the challenge of the size and strength of pythons every day. Catching three to five pythons is a job that requires a lot of patience and discipline. Although this work seems simple, behind it is a great community effort to minimize the negative impact of pythons on the environment and daily life of the community. To better understand the python invasion situation in the United States, let's continue watching this video. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, rats cause an estimated $10 billion in damage to Americans each year. 
These animals are not only animals that eat farmers' food, but are also the cause of crop damage and transmitting diseases to them, especially the ability to transmit many pathogens. Rats are creating many problems related to human health and the sustainability of the agricultural industry. Agricultural rats have become one of the most common pests on farms and homes and are a major pest that has raised concerns among Americans because of their omnivorousness and ability to transmit diseases, possibly cause significant damage. In this video, we will explore how to use mousetraps effectively and safely to solve this problem. When starting to use mouse traps, it is important to choose a trap that is appropriate for the size and type of mouse you want to control. In the US, there are three popular types of mouse traps to choose from, including snap traps, spring traps, and novelty traps. Choosing the right trap will increase your chances of catching mice. Placing the mouse trap in the correct location is also an important factor for high effectiveness. Choose a location near food and water sources. Places where mice often appear, such as kitchen corners or poultry rooms. Areas that rats often visit have a variety of food, so use bait that rats like to lure them into the trap. Cheese or nut sandwiches are often attractive and easy-to-use options. Place bait in the trap carefully to ensure the mouse will be caught. After the mouse trap has worked and you have caught the mouse, it is important to check the trap regularly to ensure effectiveness and safely destroy the caught mice. They can be buried or burned or taken to a waste treatment facility according to local regulations. Always follow safety regulations when using mouse traps to ensure the safety of yourself and those around you. Placing mouse traps in safe locations out of reach of children and pets, is important to avoid unwanted situations. Mouse traps are an effective method of rat control in the United States. For best results and safety, choose the right trap, place them in the right location, use attractive bait, and safely dispose of captured mice. In addition to traps, rat poison is also an effective method of rat control. However, caution should be exercised when using it because it can be toxic to humans and other animals. Always follow the instructions for use and safety regulations, making sure the medicine is stored in a safe place to avoid unwanted situations. If there is any doubt or emergency situation, farmers should consult an insect or animal control specialist for specific guidance and solutions. Understand that the use of rat poison can affect the environment and human health, so consider carefully and consider different types of rats. to ensure safety and efficiency for the environment and people. Maintaining a clean and food-free environment is important. This not only prevents rat outbreaks, but also ensures a safe and healthy working environment for workers. Not only should mouse control measures be effective, but they should also be implemented in an attractive and content-retaining manner.
Ensuring the safety of humans and other animals is an important mission of the association. Continuous research and testing are being conducted to create more effective methods and ensure a balance between humans and nature. This has important implications for the sustainable development of the agricultural industry and the protection of the natural environment worldwide. You have encountered a situation where rats are present in your home and farm. How did you handle and prevent this rat invasion? Please share how you handled and prevented their invasion in the comments section below. Sharing experiences and learning from the community is very important so that we can find effective solutions and best adapt to each person's specific environment. Next, we will explore the east coast of the United States, where we will learn about lionfish. This is an invasive fish species commonly associated with the waters of the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Lionfish species in this family of venomous fish often have diverse origins and stand out with unique characteristics. Lionfish are especially adapted to their living environment, especially the ambush predator, which has poisonous spines along its back. This unique characteristic gives them the ability to puncture human skin and create a painful sting. However, not only do they have poisonous spines, but they also have long, wide fins that help them become excellent swimmers. Originating from the eastern United States, they likely swam in from the Caribbean, with about 93% of red lionfish found here. These lionfish first appeared off the Florida coast in 1985 and were studied and published in the 1919s. Many believe that Hurricane Andrew in 1992 may have been partly responsible for the six-fish lion is believed to have escaped after a South Florida aquarium was destroyed. To date, lionfish have created many challenges in the reef's ecosystem. Their influence is not limited to affecting the fry numbers of other animals, but also causes significant damage. Studies show that the appearance of one strain of lionfish on a coral reef can lead to a reduction in the number of juvenile fish of other species, even though there are traps designed to capture them. Large numbers of lionfish are still pulled out of the ocean every year, causing negative impacts. Numbers of eastern gray squirrels, native to eastern North America, are still increasing in the UK. Eastern gray squirrels play an important role in the ecosystem, helping to regenerate forests by burying seeds and nuts. They are active during the day and can be found in both wild and urban environments, taking advantage of food from their surroundings, including food found in the eastern United States. The eradication of eastern grey squirrel populations has been successful in the UK, where they have become a major invasive species. The current population of eastern grey squirrels here is completely dominant, and the sighting of a squirrel in the UK is almost certainly an eastern grey squirrel. This situation is a result of their introduction into the wild in the 1800s and has now created a free-ranging population, with some being intentionally released into the wild. In the 1880s, the 11th Duke of Bedford introduced gray squirrels into the parks at Weaving Abbey and also introduced large numbers of the population into regional parks in London. 
During this period, no one could predict the dangers of introducing non-native species, and no one could foresee the damage gray squirrels would cause. The eastern gray squirrel, a much larger species than the native red squirrel, was easily outcompeted and led to a significant decline in red squirrels. When the eastern grey squirrel appeared, the native red squirrel almost disappeared from much of Britain and Ireland. However, they still exist in some areas of Northern Ireland. People here have used poison to control squirrel populations. But some grey squirrels have also been poisoned and even native red squirrels have been affected. Eastern grey squirrels, with their intelligence and ability to reproduce rapidly, have facilitated a dramatic increase in their numbers despite toxic control. Effective control of the eastern gray squirrel population has required vigorous efforts. There are an estimated 2.5 million eastern gray squirrels in the UK, while the population of red squirrels, the most common fox species, remains around 140,000. Red squirrels are one of the most numerous and widely distributed fox species throughout the Northern Hemisphere, with 45 different classifications. The success of red squirrels in increasing their numbers is largely due to their adaptability and widespread distribution. Red squirrels have the ability to adapt to many different environments and living conditions, which helps them survive on a large scale and in significant numbers. This poses a great challenge in maintaining the natural balance among fox species and protecting the biodiversity of the environment. 